In this video, we'll create a full screen responsive landing page using Bootstrap 4. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the full screen landing page here before we get started with the tutorial. So at the top of the website, you can see we have a logo off to uh, the left and then off to the right, we have these um, social media icons and I'm gonna show you how you can add any icon you want. Then over top of the landing page, we have a heading one and a button there where it says get started. And you can see that those stay uh, absolute or fixed when we go up the page. And it's gonna resize when we get down to 768 pixels. So we'll just add one media query once we get to the CSS portion of the tutorial. Then scrolling down the website, we just have some content down here to give the website its uh, full screen landing page effect with content underneath it scrolling on top of the image when we go up. And included in the Jumbotron is a link to a bootstrap course I created for Udemy. So if you wanna check out uh, the course, that link has a 93% off coupon in it. And you can go ahead and check it out and preview the course with a few different um, videos that I've included with it for you to watch. In order to get started with the tutorial, in the description of the video will be a download link so you can download the tutorial starter files for the landing page. So included will be index.html, style.css, and then an image folder here, including the bootstrap logo and then the landing page background image, which is all we need for the design. So the text editor that I'm gonna be using that you can see in the background is called Sublime Text and you can get that from sublimetext.com. It works for uh, Mac and Windows. And I'm gonna have Google Chrome open, uh, or the website open in Google Chrome as we're building it. So I'm gonna keep this um, finished version open in one tab, and then the version that we're working on right here in another tab. So as you can see, there's already a little bit of content included for us inside of the starter files and let's go ahead and go over that. So I have style.css here open, which we'll get to uh, a little later, and then we have index.html. So from the top of the page, we have obviously the HTML tag here with HTML doc type that spans the whole document. Then within that, we have the head section where we have our character type UTF-8, which is standard set, and then viewport width device with initial scale one for mobile websites. Then we have the title of the website, uh, Bootstrap 4 landing page, then the latest version of Bootstrap CSS, and our style sheet. Then at the bottom of the website, we have jQuery, Bootstrap JS, and Font Awesome for the icons that we'll get to in a little bit. Then working down the page, we have some HTML comments set here for the nav bar and then where we start the landing page. And then I have a Jumbotron added here, which um, I showed you earlier is a link to the bootstrap course that I created. And then beneath that, we just have some heading to paragraphs there with dummy text, once again, to give it the full screen effect so we can scroll up over top of the image and it stays fixed. So let's go up to the nav bar comment just beneath it and get started with our first tag laying out our bootstrap nav bar. Okay, so let's start off with the HTML5 tag nav and then we're gonna give it the bootstrap classes for the nav bar. So class nav bar and then since we have a dark background, we'll use nav bar dash dark and bg dash dark as our classes so the links will show up light. Uh, and then we have, since the website is making its transition to the mobile version at 768 pixels, we're gonna add navbar expand-md. So the reason for this is um, it's not going to expand and collapse using just the social media buttons, but uh, the medium width, 768 pixels, if you do add navigation list items uh, other than the social media links then you can have those expand and collapse at that width and then since our logo and uh, social icons will stay fixed at the top of the website we'll just use fixed dash top um, the class to leave them at the very top no matter where we scan to on the website so you can remove that if you want them only to display 
at the very top. So there we have the start of our navigation with that dark bar there. Next let's add the bootstrap logo and then after that we'll add the uh, the icons on the right. So we'll use a link here with a class navbar dash brand which is standard for uh, making logos with bootstrap and then we can close out the link and then let's also add uh, we're not going to link anywhere, but I'll just leave it in here in case you want to link to a page. So the hashtag for the link will just stay blank, or leave the, li the link blank so we link to the same page. And then we have bootstrap.png inside of the img folder. So img forward slash bootstrap.png for the logo image. And let's go ahead and save and refresh and see how it looks. So there we have it, and we'll resize it in just a moment to get it to the appropriate size similar to the finished version, but let's move on to the social links. So go ahead and drop down under that link and create an unordered list and we're going to give this a class called navbar-nav and then we're going to use flex row so they display in line in a row rather than on top of one another and then we'll use ml-auto to position them off to the right side of the screen and we can close out the unordered list and start our list items for each individual nav item. So li class nav dash item. And then you can drop down and close out the li for the list item. And then inside of that we'll have our link. So a class nav dash link. And then we'll just leave the link blank here with the hashtag. You can put a link to Facebook for example here with your Facebook page per that icon and then inside of the link we're gonna go ahead and add the font awesome icon so that use the i tag to reference it so i tag class fabfa dash Facebook and let me go over to um, make sure you close out your i tag and let's go over to uh, font awesome with a simple Google search so I can show you how to get the icons from font awesome so as you can see it it's underneath the uh, jQuery and bootstrap JS tags here referencing font awesome so if you go to fontawesome.com you'll see a link to the icons and then you can search for icons or select one out of the thousands that they have and once you select it and you go to the page you're gonna see the I class here so you can just change it to whatever i class that is if you want to have your own custom icons at the top of the landing page okay so there we have our first icon for facebook and let's go ahead and drop down and add the rest of our social icons so i'll scroll back up and to save us some time i'm just going to copy this and paste it uh, three times over and then all we have to change will be um, Facebook to Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Okay, so I'll just do this one as Twitter, and then we have YouTube, and then Instagram. And in some cases, Font Awesome even has multiple different icons per social media outlet, so make sure to check that out. So here we have all four of our icons. So next, let's go ahead and reference the actual landing page section. So the CSS for the landing page is really tricky to make it work on cell phones. So what I did is I already included some of the CSS in there for us already. Everything under iOS landing page fix is for the actual landing page. So we're gonna go ahead and reference these classes in order to get the landing page to display for us. So we're gonna say div class landing and then within that we'll have div class home dash wrap and then inside of that we'll have a class called home inner which is where we're actually going to add our background image and I'm going to show you how you can customize this in just a moment so you can go ahead and close out the divs and then beneath that we'll go ahead and add the content that displays uh, over top of the landing page. So we have the bootstrap text and then the get started button underneath it. 
So we're going to wrap that with a div class called a caption. That's not a bootstrap class, we're just going to make it up. And then to center it, we'll use center-block and text-center. Then you can close out the div and we'll just use a heading one tag here for the bootstrap text that we're seeing. So I'm just going to leave it uppercase in here. Or you can do text transform uppercase in the CSS once we get to it. That's up to you. So there we have our bootstrap text. And as you can see right now, it's displaying underneath the area where the landing page is going to go. But we'll fix that in the CSS. And then we have our bootstrap button underneath. So we'll write A class for the button link. And then BTN. And this button is a class called BTN outline dash light which makes it kind of see-through with the white parameter. And then we'll use the medium size button with btn-md. You can do sm for small, md for medium, lg for large, or xl for extra large. And then we have obviously the get started text. Okay, so there you can see the get started button. So we'll be able to see that much better once there's a dark background behind it. And that's everything for the HTML. So let's go ahead and move over to style.css. And let's start off with the logo and resizing that at the top of the website. So we'll get to that referencing the navbar brand class and then the image inside of it. So .navbar brand and then img for the image. And then we'll just say height to rem which is the equivalent to about 32 pixels. One rem is 16 pixels, the default paragraph size in Google Chrome. And then to add some additional space off to the corners here, let's go back and add an additional class inside of the nav called container-fluid. So that'll add a little bit of uh, padding off to the left and right. Okay, that's good. So now our logo and uh, social icons aren't sort of pushed all the way off to the sides of the page. So next, let's go ahead and rather than continue with the um, nav bar, since we're going to make it transparent, let's add our background image first before we style the uh, background of the nav bar and the social links. Okay, so let's go ahead and reference the class called home-inner. So we'll say dot home-inner and then background image and then URL and single quote in parentheses and that's going to be img forward slash landing dot png. Okay, so now if we go and refresh, there we have our full screen landing. And let me show you, before we move on, how you can change the height. So the 100 VH is basically 100% of the vertical height. So if you change that to 80, it's only going to take up 80% from the very top, not including the space, or actually including the space where the nav bar takes up and I'll just change it back to 100 for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and reference the navbar to make it transparent. So we'll just say navbar background color transparent. Okay, and then if we go and refresh, we'll actually probably need to do the uh, important tag here with Bootstrap to override the defaults. So there we go. Okay, so now we have the transparent background. And next, let's move on to the social links off to the right. So these are SVG images or icons. So we can go ahead and just reference those with the simple SVG tag. So we'll say color white to match the logo. And that looks good. And then let's increase the size a little bit to 1.3 rem, which is a little bit, 
it's about 20 pixels or so, something around there. And then let's create some space from the uh, top. There we go, with the sizing. I think we'll just need to do important on everything inside the nav bar. So we'll say margin top 0.4 rem important. Okay, so that looks good. Now it's more in line with the logo off to the left. And then let's add some margin to the right of them to space them apart a little bit. So 0.8 rem important for the margin right. Okay, so that looks good. So now let's go ahead and drop down to the um, caption content with the heading one and the bootstrap button. So let's reference that class that we made, the div class caption. Okay, so we'll say dot caption. And we'll say position absolute because we want it to kind of stay fixed, not fixed in the sense of the nav bar, but fixed as we're scrolling up the page with position absolute. And then we'll say Z index one, so it displays on top of the background image. So right now it's not going to, it's just displaying on top of the jumbotron. So what we'll need to do is we'll say top and let's use 35% and let's see where that ends us up with. So there we have it displaying on top of the background image. So to center it, we'll need to give the um, caption class a width. So we'll give it a width of 100%. And then the center block and text center bootstrap classes that we gave it will take into effect centering it the rest of the way. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's go ahead and style the heading one for the bootstrap text to get it looking like the original here. So let's go ahead and reference the um, H1 for the heading one. And we'll increase the font size. Let's go with 4.5 rem. Okay, and then let's make it a little more bold. So you can use a bold weight of 600 or 700. I'm gonna go with 600 because we're gonna do the white outline. So now it's a little more bold. And then let's change the color to black to match the, um, the shadow of the person and the sort of mountains at the bo bottom of the image. And then finally, let's add the white border. So that's dash webkit dash text dash stroke. And we'll go with a three pixel outline or border, whatever you want to call it. And let's choose white. So that looks good. I think it's a little too hard on the edges with the white. The original is a little darker. Let's go with an off-white hex value of F9, F9, F9 and that looks pretty good. So let's change the positioning to 28% to pull it up above the guy's head. And then let's push the um, get started button down so it has the black background over the torso of this guy. So we'll say padding bottom five rem on the heading one. Okay, so the positioning looks good now. Let's go ahead and just add a little bit of style to the button. So we can reference that using just the BTN class. We don't need to use any other uh, button references. So we'll say dot BTN, and let's widen the um, border a little bit with border width medium, or you can add a um, rem value if you want, but medium is pretty good. And that kind of matches the, the feel of the um, the bootstrap webkit outline or text stroke. And then let's ch take away the border radius. So let's just go with border radius zero to match the original to give it the boxy sort of modern feel. 
So that looks good, and as you can see, the other button in the Jumbotron uh, did the same. And then one thing I forgot here is to add the um, hover color to the icons there, which we'll need to do since we changed the uh, inherent color. So we'll just say SVG colon hover, and let's make it um, sort of like a grayish white with D1, D1, D1. It's a really light gray, so it kind of has a minimal effect when we hover over it. Okay, so that looks good as far as the full width version of the full screen landing page goes. So if we hover or toggle back and forth from the original and the version we're working on, we're gonna see some changes once we get down to the medium width or 768 pixel mark. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of style to this media query that I started for us already in the starter files. And let's start with the size of the logo in their upper left hand corner. So we'll reference the navbar class. So dot navbar dash brand or navbar brand class and then image for the logo image. And let's change the font size or the height rather to 1.5 rem so that looks pretty good and then to match let's decrease the size of the SVG icon so we'll say SVG font size 1 rem from 1.3 rem and that looks better and then next we have the um, the heading 1 so let's decrease that from 4.5 rem to a 2.5 rem font size. And also we'll need to decrease the size of the, um, the WebKit text stroke. So I've actually forgot to do that in rem values, which is best for Bootstrap because that's what they build it with. But that's all right that we use Pixel for this. All right, so that looks good, except for one thing that you can mess around with is where the um, heading one starts and the padding underneath if you want. So for example, you can say caption top 35% instead of 28% if you wanna push it down the screen, and you can decrease the padding underneath the uh, bootstrap heading if you want. Okay, so that does it for the mobile width and the full width, as you can see. I want to thank you for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, comment, and check out my bootstrap course linked in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.